Khan is a real, true pioneer, both in Israel and worldwide, of the security uh, industry. He understood what's going on before, I guess, everybody else. The industry owed him a lot. He created a huge company, very successful company, probably the jewel in the Israeli cyber tech, and I hope I'm not insulting everybody, anybody else. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Gil Schwade. We live in one world in which technology is constantly changing everything around us. And in this world, we have one focus, the customer, and one goal, to drive growth. To do so, customers need one thing, uncompromised security. With one leading industry business partner who will deliver value-based advanced security solutions. A partner who would enable them to take giant steps to achieve better business outcomes. A step up to any challenge. A step away from risk. A step towards a world of secure business and innovation. One step at a time, ahead of threats, ahead of any competition, ahead of the cyber criminals, looking ahead to the future. This is our mission, to enable our clients to always be one step ahead. Mobile, cloud, threat prevention. Welcome to the future of cybersecurity. Checkpoint. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure being here, and it's a great to see the full room and how this conference is going every year. Um, Governor Snyder get a great job on this presentation. I'm glad we don't speak exactly on the same subjects, but I think these things really match each other, so they really complement each other. Um, I think you see the title of my presentation. I'm speaking about the future of cybersecurity and about the fact that we are already in the future. So before I jump into more technical terminology and to uh, talk about uh, uh, what we're doing and what the industry is doing. Let me start by giving you a personal story. Three months ago, I had a new baby born. Uh, it's going to be three months on Friday. And um, we're all very excited. And like every typical man, when I have a new baby coming, uh, I need to do something about it. So I need to buy a new gadget for myself. So um, I found on the internet that just when the baby was born, came out to the internet a new electronic baby crib. The one you see in the picture here, it's real. And that's an electronic baby crib. It senses the baby, it uh, rocks the crib, it plays some noises that's supposed to make the baby uh, go back to sleep. And that's, you know, the perfect dream for the father. I can put the baby, he's going to fall asleep. So I got this uh, new baby crib, we imported it to Israel, everything worked fine, and the, the baby's mother is taking really, really good care of him, but when he was like uh, three weeks old, she made the, the mistake and left him for one hour with me. She had to do some errands, so she went away and gave me the baby. Of course, that was a great opportunity for me to take care of my baby and my gadget, and after a few minutes, the baby started crying, so I said, great, I'm putting him in the crib, I'm turning the... Um, the button on, I, there is even an app that uh, I watch him and put him there, I press the button, nothing happens. Trying again, nothing happens. Reconnect to the electricity, again, nothing happens. Then the red light turns on, I'm trying again. Restarting the machine, reinstalling the app, there is an app that controls that. Nothing works, I'm trying to do all the different diagnostics that I can, looking on the internet, still nothing happens. Uh, the baby, meanwhile, I think, was, I don't know, he was uh, crying a little bit. I hope he was doing okay. <laughs> after a while, after trying uh, enough, um, luckily my wife came back and took on the baby. I gave up. I said, this device doesn't work. I'm frustrated and so on. And went off. I said, I'll take care of it tomorrow. The next morning, I get an email. And I get an interesting email that you can read here. It says, 
Hello, Gil. Yesterday we had an internet outage. And due to the internet outage, all these new devices, that's how it's called, didn't work. So apparently my baby is controlled from the internet. And I don't know if it was an attack or if it was some other problem on their internet cyber security system, but that means that even our babies are now controlled by the internet and we are all connected. And that's, I think, the main, the main theme and what we need to remember. Everything is connected now. We depend on the internet. We depend on cyber every day of our life. And every interruption, security or otherwise, affects our daily life. And that's what we need to, uh, that's what we need to remember. So how, what are we doing about that? Well, here are a few predictions that I made two and three years ago about the future of cybersecurity. And let's see what reality turned into. So, for example, two years ago, I've talked about mobility. Mobile devices, these devices that we all carry in our pockets. Uh, I've said that they are becoming a major threat for internet security. So let me ask a quick question. How many of you run some security software on your mobile device to protect it against attackers? Nice percentage here, about 5-6% here. That's much higher than the general industry. And two, three years ago, when we spoke with people about it, they say, well, there's no attacks around that. We haven't seen anything. Some of other companies defend us. But let's see what really happened in the last uh, two years. For example, in August, our research team found a malware called dress code that actually uses mobile devices to get into corporations' networks, to access the, the corporate network. In November, there was a, a big attack called Gulligan that breached over a million Google accounts. So all the data, pictures, emails, everything that we keep on the Google Cloud was accessed on more than a million accounts. It started with, a, with an Android malware that affected tens of millions of phones. Uh, we've seen last year uh, more than doubling of, uh, of attacks on mobile phones, and in some months our research network saw that uh, about 20% of the attacks on the internet were already mobile attacks. So mobile is real, it's not something of the future. Not only that we use mobile, but mobile attacks are affecting us every day. Everything is connected. I gave you the example of my baby, he's very cute, but he's already connected. Um, but there's more than that. I mean, we see in November the um, Muni system, the trains of San Francisco were all attacked by ransomware that locked down the payment machine and they basically had to open the train to everyone for free, otherwise they couldn't operate it. Just this week we saw in Austria an hotel where guests were locked out in and out of their rooms because somebody took over the IoT system that controls the room keys. So think about it, you wake up in the morning, you need to get to your ski or to your flight, you can't leave the room, the room is locked. You check into the hotel, you can't get into your room, the room is locked. So that's, that's reality, and by the way, that shows us that the attacks are not only against these big, giant organizations or state-sponsored. This attack can, can uh, affect anyone. can affect uh, my baby, can affect a small hotel in the Alps, and they do. So that's about uh, being connected. And I think one thing that I've talked a lot last year is the fact that, unlike in the real world that our, that, you know, Big organizations or countries have to face other countries as their enemies and they have uh, strategic tools. When somebody breaks into our house, they usually, they might carry a hammer. They are not very well equipped. In cyberspace, we are all targeted. We're ta we are all, we're targeted all the time and the attackers have the most strategic weapons. So every kid that wants to attack us may have access to the strategic weapons that in the physical world only superpower has. So let's see an example of that. Last, uh, last uh, August, the NSA hacking tool, NSA is the National Security Agency of the US, was leaked on the internet, sold online, and every hacking group on the internet today have an access to the NSA hacking tools. That just illustrates that point. And we've seen what's happened in the November election in the US. Again, I don't know what happened and to which extent, but clearly there was an involvement of foreign forces in the U.S. election um, just, uh, just two months ago. So clearly, we see that the future is already here. We're not just talking about some futuristic scenarios and mobile devices that we'll carry in our pockets. We are speaking about real things that happen today in our daily life. And the question that we have to ask ourselves, 
um, what will happen next year and how do we deal with it. So next year, no major surprises. Um, attacks will continue to grow. We are all targets, let's remember that. Um, I believe that the focus will be on three areas. One is the continuation of sophisticated attacks, of um, advanced threats. Advanced threats are continue to grow. Again, every criminal group will have these tools and have these tools and will continue to use them. And our networks and our computers will continue to be a target. Second is what I call here cloudification. We are using more and more cloud application. We're using more and more the cloud. It's a great extension to our network. We have to remember when we use the cloud, we're getting, just like when we buy a new computer, we're getting a bare platform and we have to secure it. And people don't realize that and you'll see it in the next slide. And mobility that in my mind is the real backdoor to our, uh, to our infrastructure, to our corporate infrastructure, to our personal and daily life is a fundamental part of each business and it's being under daily attack. So this is what we want to worry about. So are we taking the right approach and what are we doing about it? And by the way, there are technologies today in different stages that address all these areas. There are technologies for mobile security, there are technologies for cloud security, there are technologies more evolved to address the advanced threats. Are we taking the right approach? So let's see how many customers actually use these technologies today. It will probably come as no big surprise, but you see the percentage is very low. Actually, if you look here, you see 96% of the people don't use any technology to tackle advanced threats. 99% of organizations don't use mobile security. Only one to 2% use technologies to address cloud security. This is extremely low, and theoretically I can stop the presentation here and say, guys, great, great. Use the technology, there's many vendors here uh, that make this technology, we'll be happy to sell you some and the problem solved. Um, and why are we surprised that we are vulnerable if we're not using the tools to block them? We know the, the attacks are there, we know it's important, it's, uh, we don't, uh, I don't have to pitch not here and not everywhere else about the importance of cybersecurity. So why are we surprised? But there are explanations, and when we speak to customers all around the world in all the different industries, from governments to uh, small, medium, and large enterprises, we have a lot of explanations. Some of them I can call them excuses. Some of them are real explanation. It's too complicated. We didn't realize it's such a problem. There is too many point products. It's very hard to build a solution through so many technologies. And if you'll see here, there's probably hundreds of companies that give you piece of the solution. It's very hard to put them together not enough trained people, this is definitely a real, a real challenge and a real problem. And we didn't think it can hurt us, that's more of the excuses part, because we know it can hurt us. So, what should we do about that? And how do we deal with that? Um, what's the conclusion? We are under constant attack, we're not taking the enough action, and we are not investing in the right places. We are investing. I mean, there is an investment in cybersecurity. Can it be bigger? It can be bigger, but I don't think that's the source of the problem. The source is where we put the investment in. So let's maybe give a more view, um, an image of the situation. If this is our floor, our, uh, our floor is full of different threats. You can see them, the f each one of them is a cybersecurity threat. What are we doing today? We deal with what we know. So we put the street light and we look under the street light because this is what we know how to operate. And then we find some of the threats, we have a team here of people, they know how to block these threats. Obvi and this is already the known threat, and this is exactly where all the 99 and 96% of things we don't use are. So what's the right, so that obviously doesn't work well because there's many, many threats all around that we simply, they are there, they are attacking us, but we don't look at them. So what can we do? We can take another approach, which is installing many, many systems separate system, multiple teams. This again doesn't work too. Separate systems, multiple system, very costly, very hard to integrate, and mainly we don't have enough people to operate that complexity and to deal with all these different systems. And maybe one more thing, when we have too many systems, there's a lot of dark areas between them, the attacks will come again from these dark areas. What's the right approach? The right approach would be to broaden our beam and to try to build one consolidated system 
when we can have a single team identify all the threats and mainly block all the threats, which is more important than that. And that's the view that we are trying to pitch to our world. Let's build a security that's really built for a business, that's really built for our future. And that's the new view. We need to focus on cloud, we need to focus on mobility, and we need to focus primarily not just on detection, and I see it in many government and state nationwide security systems that focus on collecting intelligence, that's important, but that's only the next step. If you can't prevent and if you can't act upon the threat, it, you're not effective. So we are now at stage one of solving the problem. There is more steps. We need to actually go to prevention, and that's the future of cybersecurity, cloud, mobile, and threat prevention. I think to all the people here in the room, um, we need to think about the real challenges here. And when we ask our customers what do they need they say we want to secure any environment we operate in, we want to do it efficiently, and we want to keep the attacks outside. And that's the important element when we design a new system we have to look on. Um, how do we do that? Um, we do that uh, <coughs> by building the single architecture that addresses all these areas. So if in the past we dealt with the network and the endpoint, this is where what we had to defend, this is where attacks came from. This was yesterday, it's still very, very important to defend, uh, to, to defend the network and the endpoint. Today, we clearly need to address the cloud, the data center, the mobile environment. This is already here, this is already part of our life. And when we think about building the future of security, and that's the systems we are building now, and we are demonstrating now, it's about systems that protect our uh, Internet of Things infrastructure, our automotive, that's again, we are, we are afraid to use automatic cars, autonomous cars because of the cybersecurity implication. Meanwhile, people are getting killed in the street because humans are making mistakes. And we should look at national security, how each country, each state can provide more security to itself and to the citizens and industrial control systems that are also very, very important of our life. So this is, we need to have one approach, one system that can secure all these environments, and we need that system to look at all the different elements of security. One architecture, consolidated single architecture that will address the mobile, the cloud, the network, integrate the threat prevention into that, out of scale with our systems, with our cloud, and we'll know how to express the, in technical terms, the, the business policies that we have in our systems. That's the fundamentals of how to build a security future for the system, for the future. There's many, many, I won't go and read through this slide, but there's many, many technical terminology that we have to look at, but in short, it, we need to look at the network at the cloud, we need to look at the content and the data, and we need to address the mobile and the endpoint. And um, so if I need to summarize what we need to do, we need to build this comprehensive system that will give us one approach. The future of cybersecurity is already here with the cloud, with the mobile, with the threat prevention. We are here, we have a very important task ahead of us, and I think all the people in this room are involved in this task. We are the ones building the future of cybersecurity. We are the ones that have this mission to make our cyberspace safer and to keep it secure. That's our mission, to keep the world safe. So thank you very much for listening to me and hope you're sharing this joint mission that we all share with and make it a better world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gil. <coughs> One question, you say that your baby is being controlled by the internet. Do you see the time where babies will be made on the internet? Oh, that's <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much.